For 25 years, the National Institute of Family and Life Advocates, or NIFLA, has equipped pregnancy centers to serve women and their communities. Now, after all the time, work and money, its leaders and supporters are talking about the potential end of legalized abortion in America. The numbers and accomplishments tell the story of how this organization helps women choose life. Some 1,600 U.S. pregnancy centers, the introduction of using ultrasounds to the pro-life movement. Since we started that, over 1,300 pro-life medical clinics utilizing ultrasound are in existence across the country. An abortion-minded woman comes in, she's been told it's a blob of tissue, she sees the ultrasound, and bingo! The We've seen huge numbers of women choose life because of that. Alveda King applauds the boots on the ground work. The pregnancy care centers are the heart of the pro-life movement. And the reason I believe that, they don't just say to a mother who comes to the door and she's pregnant and faced with a decision to birth a child or not, but they speak to the mother, they support the birth of the child, the father is welcome and the community is welcome. So I'm very fond of NIFLA's work. NIFLA recently hosted a gathering of pro-lifers as part of its annual leadership summit. It comes at a time when many in the movement are more hopeful than ever that the Roe versus Wade decision might be overturned. And some reasons for that hope are that the culture is changing and abortion clinics are closing down year after year. Andrew and Ashley. Charlene, Mississippi recently asked the Supreme Court to take up an abortion case. What's the state's argument? The state, this really is going to the heart of Roe v. Wade. They're saying that Roe v. Wade is wrong, egregiously wrong, and that this issue of abortion regulation should be left up to the states, not the federal government. Wow. Well, if the court rules in Mississippi's favor, I mean, what would happen to Roe v. Wade? I mean, Roe v. Wade would be dead. This whole issue of abortion would revert back to the states. And it's really important that we highlight this one point from one of the leading pro-abortion um, proponents. And she says, if Roe v. Wade is overturned, half of the states would ban abortion. So this is a very, very huge possibility that we're keeping our eyes on. And Charlene, certainly an emotional issue for a Absolutely. lot of people. And the end of Roe is something pro-abortion advocates dread. So how might they react if Roe v. Wade is overturned? It's really important. I want to just share uh, a quote from Tom Glessner. We, we had him in this story that we interviewed um, concerning about abortion. And he says, we're going to see a huge, huge hysteria from abortion advocates and maybe some violence. I think we better be prepared for that because they will be screaming and hollering how the court has taken away women's rights. Wow. Well, we did receive a question about this topic from Instagram. Uh, Mia is wondering, I heard that Texas just banned abortion after six weeks in the entire state and the U.S. Supreme Court, Court did nothing to stop it. How could this affect the results of the Mississippi case? The fact that the U.S. Supreme Court did not intervene in this case is very significant and it really may point to how they, you know, handle what's happening in Mississippi, you know, leaving this whole issue to the states. And so this could be something that pro-lifers saying, pro-lifers are saying this is a very good sign, a very good signal that things are really shifting in our way. So all eyes are on Mississippi right now. Yeah. All right, Charlene, thanks for your insight and being with us today. You're welcome. And we want to remind you, you can get all the latest news and more when you download the CBN News Channel app.